Matthew chapter 8, and I'll read the first four verses. When he came down from the mountain, great crowds followed him. And behold, a leper came to him and knelt before him, saying, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. And Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him, saying, I will be clean. And immediately his leprosy was, clean, was cleansed. And Jesus said to him, see that you say nothing to anyone, but go show yourself to the priest and offer the gift that Moses commanded for a proof to them. Well, with chapter eight, uh, we uh, enter a, a, a new section of Matthew's gospel. We remember that Matthew's gospel has the alternating sections, uh, narrative and then teaching. We just had the big section of teaching, chapter five to seven. But also remember at the end of chapter four, uh, Jesus was described as proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease. And it seems that uh, in a sense, five to seven is uh, this is the content of what he was uh, preaching. And then chapter eight uh, to nine, we see his healing. And that pattern is actually repeated uh, in chapter nine and uh, verse 35 towards the end of this section. Uh, Jesus went throughout all, all the villages, cities, uh, teaching in the synagogues proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every affliction. affliction. So that looks back. So I, I think it's really interesting, kind of uh, four and nine, sort of bookend uh, this uh, big section of Matthew, and we've got uh, proclamation and uh, we've got healing. Now, uh, chapter eight and nine, it's not just healing. Um, it's, it's really uh, miracles. They're mostly healings, although we do have uh, Jesus calming us, uh, the storm. And um, without wanting to be too artificial and put too kind of strong a structure on it, but I think it's helpful to, to break up uh, chapters eight and nine. Um, what, what we see is uh, three miracles and then teaching on discipleship, three miracles, teaching on discipleship, three miracles, teaching on discipleship. So um, uh, one to, uh, to four, we have the, the leper, then... Um, Next section, we have the uh, centurion, then Jesus heals many. So it's kind of three uh, miracles. And then we have uh, Jesus teaching on the cost of following him, discipleship. And you see the same, roughly the same pattern uh, throughout uh, chapters eight and nine. So I think that helps to get a handle on uh, on what's going on. And I guess the, um, the, the, the reason for the pattern is, you know, Jesus demonstrating his authority and then calling people to follow him, demonstrating his authority, calling people to follow him, demonstrating uh, his authority, calling people to follow him. And that's the pattern that we see really throughout all, all the Gospels. Uh, the first uh, miracle we have is uh, Jesus healing a man who did not have leprosy. OK, who did not have leprosy. Uh, uh, the, uh, the Greek word uh, lepra. All our uh, English translations translated as leprosy, which makes sense. However, for us, leprosy is uh, the disease um, known medically as Hansen's disease. Um, it's a, it's uh, thankfully can be treated with drugs, but it's a, it's a, an affliction that affects the nerves, and people can end up um, uh, losing uh, body parts. Uh, as I said, thankfully it's it's uh, treated by drugs. It's um, still um, Kind of present in uh, India. I actually visited uh, the last uh, leper colony in Europe, which is in uh, Tikilesht in uh, Romania, and uh, there are currently nine inhabitants there. But that's Hansen's disease. Somewhere around the eighth century, um, um, people began to sort of uh, equate these two uh, diseases. What we now know as Hansen's disease is leprosy. But actually, in uh, in the Bible, uh, lepra. Uh, this this condition is a is a sort of wide range of, of skin conditions. Uh, they could be serious. Any, anyone who's had eczema all over the, their body, I mean that that is a seriously painful and debilitating condition. But it's the sort of conditions that we might treat with uh, you know anti antifungal cream. Uh, it's interesting in Leviticus uh, thirteen and fourteen, um, uh, houses and garments could be aff afflicted with lepra. So again, it shows it's not uh, the disease that we know as Hansen's disease. So it's just a bit of an unfortunate kind of history of, of Bible translation and everything there. Uh, although it's not uh, maybe as medically serious as the disease that we know as, as leprosy, it was ritually uh, 
uh, considered incredibly serious. So you can read of, of uh, Miriam in Numbers 12 verse 10, uh, Naaman in 2 Kings 5, 7. In both cases, they, they sort of equate leprosy to having death, to, to, to death. It, it's, um, it was kind of symbolic of uh, death. Uh, Jesus wonderfully heals this man with this condition. Uh, he touches him and the impurity does not kind of flow from the man to Jesus. No, the purity flows from Jesus to the man. And with a word, he is uh, healed. Uh, then we have another outsider, uh, the um, people with uh, with lepra in um, in Israel were the outsiders. Then we have a, a Gentile centurion outsider uh, who uh, Jesus heals this man's servant uh, with a word. And we have this wonderful interaction. This man, uh, in a sense, refuses to allow Jesus to come. He's not uh, doesn't consider him worthy, understands the nature of um, authority and understands that Jesus just needs to utter a word. And uh, the man's servant will be healed. And Jesus um, is um, marvels, actually. We, we, we told he's, a, he's astonished and uh, points to this man's faith and says that um, in Israel, he hasn't seen this faith. And he, here is someone outside of uh, Israel um, who has this faith. And this points forward to this theme that we've seen uh, in Matthew's gospel, that Gentiles uh, will... Um, come and take part in uh, the end time banquet. Then uh, the, the third kind of uh, miracle section is healing Peter's mother-in-law and uh, Mary. And then we get the reflection on the nature of healing and the reason for it. Verse 17 uh, from Isaiah 53, four, verse 4, he took our illnesses and bore our diseases. This connection between you know, that Isaiah makes, that the Old Testament makes between sin and sickness, it's not that the individual who's sick is more sinful, but there's a connection, particularly in the life of Israel, between sin and sickness. Uh, if uh, Israel, Deuteronomy uh, 28 says, if Israel kept the law, then they would uh, uh, they would know healing. If they turn away from the law, they, they'd be marked by sickness. The prophets kind of use sickness language to to talk of the condition of Israel. So that that's what is going on uh, here. Uh, but uh, uh, sickness itself, we know, will be banished in the new creation. And the reason it will be banished is because Jesus will have dealt with sin on, uh, on the cross. That's the connection that's being established there. Then we have this um, teaching on discipleship and these people who sort of say they want to follow Jesus. And Jesus really uh, being quite sharp with them. So it's e even one who wants to bury his own father. And uh, Jesus says, verse 23, follow me and leave the dead to bury uh, their own uh, dead. It seems harsh to us, but it, 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 in, in, the, um, in the context, it seems this, this man wanted to wait for his, um, his um, father to die to receive the inheritance. And Jesus saying, no, you need to follow now. Uh, later in the gospel, Jesus uh, kind of affirms the importance of a family. Chapter 15, verse 5, you know, you need to honor your father and mother. And it, it's a sin not to do that. Um, then we have Jesus healing uh, the storm, uh, 23 to, to, to 37, with just a word. And then we have this dramatic healing uh, at the end of the chapter where uh, these two men who uh, no one could bind, uh, Jesus uh, heals uh, with, uh, with a word. Now, these two healings uh, at the end of the chapter kind of raise, I, I guess, a, a, a big issue. Uh, the, um, after Jesus heals uh, the storm, uh, the, the people marvel, verse 27, what sort of man is this that even the winds and the sea obey him? What sort of man is this? And then the demons, when they confront uh, Jesus, uh, verse uh, 29, um, what do you have, uh, what do you have uh, to do with us, O son of God? Um, have you come to torment us before the time? So what sort of man is this? If he's the son of God. And uh, we see that uh, throughout uh, the, the chapter that Jesus is the son of God, that he does these uh, amazing healings, even uh, healing this condition that was uh, pointed uh, to uh, death. Uh, he doesn't cast a spell. He doesn't utter a prayer. He just utters a word and uh, and people are healed. So death, uh, demons and the storm on the sea is kind of chaos. Uh, here is Jesus, the son of God, God himself, who can control the powers of death and sin and chaos. Uh, who is this? It's the Son of God. Uh, it is the one uh, that, like the centurion, we're called to put our trust in. It is the one that, having seen these uh, uh, miracles, we are called to follow. Let's pray. Our Father, we thank you for Jesus. Thank you for this uh, revelation of this chapter, that he is your Son, 
in whom we can trust and know forgiveness and healing and whom uh, we can follow with our whole lives. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.